Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Hassan, and I am speaking with an honored colleague in India, the country of India, uh, Narendra Nayak. I'm just going to read a little of your bio, Narendra, if you don't mind. You, no, uh, we met through my friend Premanand, uh, yeah. who unfortunately passed away, but he uh, was the founder, I believe, of the Indian Skeptic Society, which you have been involved with yourself. I will continue. You are the current president of the Federation of Indian Rationalist Associations. And you have founded an NGO called Aid Without Religion in 2011. You've been touring the country teaching workshops to expose God, men, and frauds, which we'll get into in a minute. You've done over 2,000 demonstrations, not only in India, but all over the world. Uh, Australia, Greece, England, Denmark, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. And you are a polyglot. You speak nine languages. Narendra, you have a background in biochemistry, correct? Yes. I was teaching biochemistry in a university for 20 years. 20 years. So you're an academic. You're a scholar. Yes. Yes. I apologize. Uh, you need to change the, the, the bio in uh, Wikipedia and say that first, okay. in my opinion. <laughs> you're a scientist. Matter. You approach yeah. uh, the world through science. So yes. very, very briefly, before we started recording this, you said, uh, I'm going to tell my bodyguard to change the light. Uh, and the last time we did an interview, you said you were there were assassination attempts on your life. That's my recollection. Yes. Yes. So assume my listeners have never heard of you or Premanand or the Indian skeptics. Uh, tell us what 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 your organization does and why you need a bodyguard. Yes. Or we look at things from a humanist, rationalist perspective. Uh -huh. So whenever someone claims that they've got some supernatural power or they can uh, have some power on normal phenomenon, yes. we go ahead and try to investigate it. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about, Committee for Scientific Investigation of the Paranormal. Mm -hmm. In India, we have people who claim paranormal powers and thereby they attract others, bring them into their clutches, and then exploit them. So when you question their powers, when you expose their powers, and when the people come to know that they do not have such powers, they will stop going to them. And stop giving them that. money. Yeah, of course. It's not just money. There's so many things, including sex. Including because exploiting them sexually. Sexually, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I want to just interrupt you for a second and say that uh, one of the most famous Indian gurus that certainly uh, had a lot of followers in India but all over the world was Sai Baba. And when yes. you were talking about uh, claims of paranormal, Use him as an example. He would do sleight of hand tricks and people yes. would believe he would manifest the Rolex yeah. watch with a serial yeah. number on the back. Right, right. Say some yeah. more about the kinds of tricks because I remember yes. Premanon wrote a whole book exposing every yes. one of his tricks. Yes. Uh, materializing things from thin air. Yes. Just lay your hands in the air and produce something and right. make the people believe. If, if you do it on the stage as a magician, people would call it as a prestidigitation. Right. But here, because the so-called Godman is doing it, it's said to be a miracle. Right. That's all. Right. So that's what is happening in this country. Right. And so we had, uh, he's now deceased, a magician named James Randi, who, yes. who was a big debunker, wrote books and actually set up uh, a million dollar challenge uh, yes. that anyone could demonstrate if they can read minds or move objects with their thoughts and or yes. have a Reiki energy flow coming from their fingertips yes. and, and right. things like that. Um, 
and it it kind of highlights the 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 the, the fight between science and 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 evidence based mm -hmm. approaches to reality and magical thinking and religion yes, right and i had the uh, good luck i should say though you shouldn't use that word luck of meeting <laughs> james randy and spending around six hours with him uh -huh. at uh, bangalore mm -hmm. before he passed away he was very much impressed with the type of work that we were doing he said, Narendra, you meet as many people in a day that I meet in a year, he said. Because we have huge crowds. Yes, yeah, explain, explain yeah. for my listeners, because there are documentaries on, on uh, your organization's efforts. But you literally take your students, go out to remote villages, explain yes. what you do. Yes. Please. Uh, it, it's a multi-pronged approach. Yes. One is that I go to a place, we have some activists, there are 50 of them, mm. and we train them to do the very same things that the godmen do to show their supernatural powers. Uh -huh. And then, after they do the training, they will go to the people. It's a sort of cascade effect. So what I would do is to train them, I would do that myself in front of an audience and they'll sit in the audience and they will be watching how the audience is hungry. And then after say five or 10 days of training, they go to their villages and they start doing it. Slowly they learn as they go, as they grow, they learn more and more things and they become uh, sort of proficient in that. And that's what we thought that a cascade effect will be there and we'll have hundreds of thousands of people doing this in a country like India, which has got a population of 1.3 billion. Right. One Narendra cannot do much. <laughs> right. But to be clear, to explain to my listeners, the you teach magic tricks to your students, the same yeah. magic tricks that the godmen God use to convince people that they have powers. Supernatural powers. Supernatural powers. They go there, they do the powers, they do the tricks, and then people are like bowing and giving money, and then they no, say, "No, no, 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 you're wrong." Ah, please My explain. My people will not go there dressed as godmen. Oh, they they'll won't go there. They'll go and debunk. What they'll do is they'll do the same trick that the godmen does. Ah, Very so there's nicely. a shift from many years ago what Premanon students would do as they would first no, pretend. No, no, no. I no, thought that was that was that was one of the ways. Yes, I see. One of the ways. But nowadays they just go there with a watch the godmen, the so-called godmen, do the tricks, and they stand up and say, "Let me explain what he just how to no, do no, it." No, 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 not that way. They okay. won't get out of there alive if they go and do that in the presence of a godman. He, they've got their uh, big gangs and thugs around them. So, so they would be physically attacked if they tried yeah. to do that. So what our people will do is they'll go, they'll gather a crowd, they'll do the same godman tricks very convincingly, yeah. and then they will explain them to the people how it is done. Yeah, no, that's what I thought. said initially. That's what I thought was the plan, was they, they do the tricks. Explain, yeah. yeah. And they'll explain the principles of science behind those tricks. Right. Right. And people get, they basically, through a de demonstrations, they realize, you know, we shouldn't be bowing to these other god men. We shouldn't be giving all of our money over there. And that there's a better way of living. Yes, the humanist way of life. The humanist way of life. But Their life stands. Yes. So, but there's been a, a a shift in India since 2000, what, 14 or so, when Narendra Modi was voted in, and there's more Hindu nationalism. Am I understanding what I hear in the news correctly? It, it was growing. It just they didn't come up overnight. 
Uh-huh. It has been going on since long, the undercurrents. I see. The party in power, even before him, I see. had an element of these things in them, though they were also supporting us, uh, I should say, very clandestinely in our activities. We would co- not call that as a rationalist movement, but we would call that as a people science movement. We would call that a scientific explanation of the so-called miracles. And there is Article 51 AH in the Constitution of India, mm-hmm. which says it is the duty of every citizen to develop scientific temper and the spirit of inquiry and humanism. So we say that we are doing our duty under the Constitution of India. So that's, that's how fascinating. We that that sentence is very powerful. Yes. The spirit of inquiry, curiosity, science. Yes. It's very but powerful. It's only in, but still, it's only in letter, not it's, in spirit. Right. Well, that's... but. The, the, in America, a lot of people still give a lot of power to Americans' constitutions. So I have to imagine there might be some people in India, the many, many people, that value it as much as you do. I hope. Yes. That's what I need to hope. Right. Now, at the age of 72, mm-hmm. after being in this field for nearly 45 years, that's the only hope that I have left. Yeah. Well, I've been in my field for 40, that same amount of time as you, since my deprogramming from the Moonies cult, I've been an activist. My focus has been more on the psychology of brainwashing and cults and mind control and how to help people to yes. reality test. Yes. But I, I love, you know, what your organization has, has been doing. Um, it, it just helping people to see reality from a different point of view is liberating. Yes. Freedom of the mind, as you say. Right. Right. And so, what what else is happening right now in in India that you think Westerners, people in America and Europe, need to know more about, Narendra? There point. are these cults coming up. Cults? Which, I don't know anything yes. about cults. What? Do you, no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> cults coming up. Please say more. Yeah, I can see that at the back. The <laughs> cult of Trump. Yeah. Yeah, my last uh, book was The Cult of Trump. Indeed. We have uh, so many of these coming up with the tacit support of the powers that be, yes. because these cults all form the uh, uh, platform foundation on which this so-called Hindutva, Hindutva mm. is something different from Hinduism. Uh-huh. Hinduism is a sort of, uh, I should say, practices coming under an umbrella. Yes. Because a lot of them, which are contrary to each other, are also called as Hinduism. Uh Now, this Hindutva is a state of mind which is overriding everything else. As far as some issues. Like that's what you mean? Like for Americans? Pseudo, pseudo. Pseudo nationalism. Uh-huh. I like that. Because India as a country came into existence as a secular democratic republic. Mm-hmm. It is not a Hindu nation. Mm-hmm. In 1947, when the subcontinent was divided into two, it was divided into two secular democratic countries. Remember, Pakistan was not a Muslim nation. Mm-hmm. Pakistan was a secular country mm-hmm. with a Muslim majority. Mm-hmm. Like India, 
was a secular country with a Hindu majority. Right. Pakistan was a secular country with a Muslim majority. That's what the then Prime Minister of Pakistan said. Mm-hmm. That all my citizens will have the have equal opportunities. Mm-hmm. Of course, later on it became a Muslim nation. Mm-hmm. But India, on record, never became a Hindu nation. It's not become one so far. So but attempts are now going on. Yes. Right. Yes. On record, I'm saying. Yeah, so you yeah, should un- know that my thesis in the Cult of Trump book is that the it is comprised primarily of a lot of Christian cults, authoritarian cults, that yes. put him in power and controlled him. But also Putin was influencing Trump and controlling him. Also other institutions uh, like the National Rifle Association, the NRA. Uh, the, 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 the. So I list a number of the different cults in the cult of Trump that are anti-democracy, anti-democracy, anti-constitution, even though they claim they're following the constitution. And they're trying to take over the country. Yes. Now, a similar thing is happening in this country by an organization called as RSS. RSS. Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sun. Hmm. National Organization of Volunteers. That's what they call themselves. Uh-huh. They are the mother tree. And these are all the roots and the branches of that mother tree. And the father of that, do not believe, was an, will you fill up my blanks, was an atheist. So he's, is he cynical using it for power and money and sex or what? No, no, he is no more. He He was the, yeah, his uh, name is Vinayak Damodar Savarkar. I would need to see that written down, (laughs) but we can write a blog about our interview today. Yeah, yeah, you can. uh, You can uh, Google him. We'll be. We'll write something. Savarkar. You'll help us. S A W A R K R. Okay. He is also called as Veer Savarkar. Veer means a brave man. Uh huh. But of course, his bravery ran out when he wrote apology letters to Queen Victoria and got his sentence remitted and then started a drawing, drawing pension from the queen wow. for the rest of his life. Hmm. And Ma- Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, who is also called as Mahatma Gandhi, was assassinated by a person called as Godse. And uh-huh. they say he got inspiration from this philosophy. Called oh, this is a sort of a masculine, uh, violent, mm-hmm. aggressive sort of Hindu assertion. I should say it comes from the inferiority complex. Yeah, when so it sounds it, like white supremacists here in the United States is, yes. is a version of that in India. Yeah. yeah. Ours is much older. Mm-hmm. Ours was built through decades and decades of effort, finally culminating in this party coming to power. They came into power through things like Ram Janmabhumi, saying that Rama was born in this place, Ayodhya, where a mosque has been built on the place where he was born. So let's liberate that. Hmm. It started in 1995 or so. Mm-hmm. Then finally culminated after 20 years in these people assuming power. And now they are building a huge Rama temple there. And so, but the, the problem we have in the United States, I'd say, is at least 50 years in the making also. So I'm wondering if there aren't these bigger forces that are at work 
um, yeah. globally. It looks like, yes, it looks like the capitalists who want to take over are doing it in the name of these people. These people are fronts. For example, now in India, you see two huge uh, capitalistic outfits, Ambani and Adani, who are taking over almost everything. It's becoming a monopoly, crony capitalism. And uh -huh. crony capitalism supported by this Hindutva philosophy, or whatever you can call it. Right. More than a philosophy. Ideology. I say, yeah, I should say. It's a very flexible ideology. Whatever they think that is right becomes right. Mm -hmm. They introduce new rituals. They bring in new gods. They promote mythology as history, and everywhere they'll find something underneath. You check something like Taj Mahal. You heard of Taj Mahal, naturally. Of course. One of the wonders of the world. Right. Uh, they say. And they say underneath that there's a Hindu temple. Or they say that it was a Hindu temple, and it was called as Taj Mahal. They just uh, they make distort it up. the name of it. They distort the name of it. Tejo Mahal. Mm -hmm. Tej means some sort of energy. So it was Tejo Mahal and it was called as Taj Mahal. Similarly, they say Vatika is Vatican. They, they, they can cook up any number of things like that. You know, there's a young man here in the United States that was, uh, he did a hoax. He decided to, to make a hoax saying that all birds aren't real that the U.S. government's been killing all the birds and replacing them as drones. And he got a whole <laughs> following, but he did it deliberately just to be a hoax, yeah. to say this yeah. is the... And group. then expose it. And then expose it. But a lot of people believed it. And some people continue to believe it, even though he said, this is a, I did this as a hoax. Yeah. They'll say, no, 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 he has got powers. That's what happens to me sometimes. Yeah. They put a piece of burning camphor. I think you have seen me doing that. I Put a piece of burning camphor on my tongue. Yes. And they say, you have divine powers, but you are saying you don't have them because you don't want us to worship you. Yeah, I think, so I, have a, deep... I, think I have a picture when we were together with, a, with, a, with an arrow going through your tongue. Your trident, right. Yes, you know. <laughs> We'll have to add that to the blog. I'll have to dig that one up. That's a good one. I'm remembering a show that James Randi did with one of his students. He sent them to Australia to be a guru, and but intentionally to film yeah. reactions yeah, yeah, yeah. and then to yeah, expose it. And and uh, and the, this young man who was an artist was like, people are still contacting me saying we still believe in you. Even though, right. you know, he said I was trained by a magician, you know, right. and he had a little earplug that James would tell him his answers of what to, yeah. and to say generalizations that mean nothing, right. but to make it sound right. like it's deep. Yeah, that's uh, cold reading and warm reading. Right. We always <laughs> do that to take the people for a ride. Right now, tomorrow, I got an exposure. I've given challenges to astrologers because just a few days back, mm -hmm. a mosque was being demolished to build a new one. Mm -hmm. And some people went and said there was a temple underneath the mosque. Uh -huh. And to prove that, they brought a man who was looking at leaves and saying that there was something underneath. Uh -huh. So I gave a challenge to him. I said, I'm going to put things in envelopes. And you have to tell me what are those in that. Say right. number one contains this, number two contains this. Yes. And tomorrow is the day to open it in front of the press in Bangalore. Tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. That's great. So right now I was a bit busy with that. That's... Because I got a lot of coverage in that. And we are openly challenging all the astrologers. I said, they said you are attacking Hindus. I said, no, Muslim astrologers can also come. Yes. And astrologers can also come. Yeah. Those who read crystals, those who read tarot cards, those who do seances, anyone can come and tell me. Right. And I put five million rupees a wall. 
Mm-hmm. $5 million rupees award for those yeah. who can help And I've been saying to the people that I've been counseling over 40 years, you know, if if these powers exist, you'd think someone could prove it and make yeah, they a could million be dollars. Become rich. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But they always yeah. make excuses, the people who accept the challenge when they come against the magician who actually knows how to, how to, yeah. to do the tricks. That, that's, what we, that's what we call as a skeptic effect. A skeptic skeptics effect. Go, yeah, uh, miracles don't happen. Paranormal mm. doesn't happen. Yeah. That's it. Yep. But you, but I, I need to say, you know, my experience with Premanon, of all the people I've known in my lifetime, he, he, he came across to me as one of the most spiritual people I've ever met. <laughs> honestly, when I say spiritual, I don't mean uh, magical. I mean he was loving people, caring deeply, with compassion, very smart. Um, very wise. Uh, I believe he had a hospital helping uh, uh, people with psychological problems. And no, it, it was a general hospital, not just psychology. I people. see. But he 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 could have done anything in his life, but he genuinely cared about yes. people and about reality. Yes. And for me, it always gave me a very hu deep hu human warm spiritual i call the, i call it spiritual but it's not metaphysical it's Maybe. just it's we like love 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 is spiritual too if it's a real Maybe. thing to me Maybe. yeah yeah uh, i give, a little, I, I I give a little wiggle room narendra around this yeah i know yeah, yeah. But I say I become spiritual in the evenings. And you know that joke about. And I know, tell them that spirits always come in bodies. Yes, spirits always come in bodies. So since yes. I spoke with you, I, be, I got my uh, doctoral degree. So I'm actually a, a doctor now myself. Oh, very good. So I'm, 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 taking, I'm being taken a little more seriously by academics, at least. So... Um, what what do, does your organization need if anybody's listening to this interview from the United States? Because um, a lot of Americans, they read articles about what's happening in India, but I don't think people understand. India is the largest democracy in the world, and yes. what happens in India matters a lot in the United States, a lot yes. more. Than, than the average American, you know, thinks about. And uh, so, so speak to a bigger need. What would you like to see happen? What needs to happen? Right now, we are in a position where even the school education has been infiltrated by these people. Mm. Right now, in the state where I am, deciding the school curriculum is, has been changed and we are uh, having big protests against that because they are going to change the secular uh, democratic nature of the curriculum mm -hmm. for the schools and try to introduce all sorts of uh, supernatural things, casteism and uh, Casteism for our listeners, this is where oh, there are I, strict hierarchies that are are artificial, but people who are better than others, as opposed to human mm -hmm. rights for all. Who, 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 who said it's not official? You can't say that. Caste is official in India. Uh, it determines the caste into which you are... Uh, born mm -hmm. determines where you stay still, what you do still in 2022 cast is your friends mm -hmm. your enemies whom you marry everything so religion and caste these mm -hmm. are the two important things uh -huh. don't think that hindus are all one okay a brahmin hindu 
schedule ka sindhu there are untouchables mm-hmm. mind you 20% of the hindus i see long to a category who are I untouchables see. we are call them as the dalits mm mm-hmm. there is something like affirmative action there which in india is called as reservation of course when you say a reservation in us it means a colony where the natives are uh, staying yes but here it stands for a process by which a certain number of jobs seats are reserved for a particular category particularly the dalits uh-huh. there are the other backward castes who are called as obcs mm-hmm. brahmins who constitute the twice born brahmins they say they once get born to their mother second time they get born when the ceremony is performed on them what's called as a thread ceremony mm-hmm. they have a ritual where they have a thread put on them and then that's called as a second birth wow. so they are called as twice born people so these are the dominant ruling manipulative caste aha uh-huh. who have been always the cream of the society through ages mm-hmm. the next come the kshatriyas so called the world warriors the kings and all come from that mm-hmm. then come the vaishyas the traders who buy and sell things Mm-hmm. then we mm-hmm. have the shudras the shudras are basically the manual workers mm-hmm. say the carpenters the uh i should Lumbers. say few butchers mm-hmm. barbers toddy tappers uh-huh. have these various uh, tailors those who wash clothes and all this these come under a category who are sort of uh, not high in the hierarchy but they're touchable mm. because if somebody washes your clothes an untouchable cannot wash your clothes right so he is touchable but of course he cannot be cannot marry your daughter he cannot eat under the same roof as you but he is somewhat tolerated but the fifth caste they called as the fifth caste are the untouchables Mm-hmm. these are the people who take away your dead cows these are the people who make footwear from the leather of these cows these are the people who would clean your toilets and carry the excreta mm-hmm. on their heads oh god we dump them elsewhere mm-hmm. so these were the cars who were kept untouchable from centuries thousands of years wow so it's a very complicated system it is it is um i i i all i can say is we're having a problem with banning books in school curriculums here in the united states now in florida the state of florida uh and the, this is a i believe this is a conspiracy uh of authoritarianism to keep control over yes. the populations and the resources yes. Yes. and very yeah. right and again there is a, a linguistic imposition also they are trying to impose the language of the north called as hindi mhm they are trying to impose it on the south where people do not understand the language at all unless there's somebody like me they won't understand hindi right because in the south we have got five major languages which millions of people speak mhm tamil kannada mm-hmm. telugu malayalam these are the different so they're languages. trying to nationalize a single dialect or a language and force everyone to be one be that uh huh and so they're like the chinese the han chinese are trying to do to the uyghur muslims Mandarin. and everyone else to to be there comes a religion bit now this speaking of languages is has nothing to do with religion except for one particular language which they try to 
project as a language of Muslims, a language uh-huh. called Urdu, because uh-huh. it's the national language of Pakistan. Mm-hmm. They say it is a Muslim language. Though there are more Urdu speakers in India than in Pakistan. There are? More speakers of Urdu yes. in India than in Pakistan. Anyway, these are very complicated methods being used to exploit the people. Right. And, you know, we have, we do not have a presidential system like in the United States. Mm-hmm. We have a first past the post system in which this is a sort of what they call as the Westminster democracy, mm-hmm. in which a number of candidates will uh, stand for an election or a member of the parliament. Mm-hmm. And the person who gets the highest votes will become the member of the parliament. Even mm-hmm. though he may get 30% of the votes, since he is the person who is getting the highest, he becomes the member. Mm-hmm. Because there may be 10 other candidates who get 10%, 20%, 15%, 5%, and maybe 1%. Uh-huh. But one who gets the highest percentage will become the representative and they will be the ruling party. They will elect the prime minister and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So a party can come to power in India getting 30% of the total votes polled in the election. That's what has been happening. Which is not so representative of everybody. It's only representative of less of than a its third. Voters. Mm-hmm. The office voters. Mm-hmm. So th- th- this complicated system gives a two-third majority to a party who has got around 42% of the votes. And there's nothing you can do about it. And then after electing that prime minister, now Narendra Modi, he is acting sort of presidential mm-hmm. without going into the intricacies of a democracy where debates should go on, things right. should be voted for and all. Yeah, because he's he has got a group majority. Like, he's acting like an autocrat, like a dictator. Yes. yes. He was a big supporter of Trump. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And a few months before the COVID epidemic, uh, pandemic hit India, he had invited Trump to his native state mm-hmm. where there was a huge... Uh, crowd welcoming Trump and they say next time it is the Trump government that's going to come. Mm-hmm. Sadly for him, it did not. Yeah. I think that uh, the same people who put Trump in power put him in power, Modi. Modi. Maybe, it's yeah. just a theory. I have nothing to prove that. Um, thank you for your your heroism, your willingness to stand up for facts and for <laughs> science and for you know what's he, real it's cowardice it's not heroism what is it it's cowardice i'm a coward i cannot run away from myself so you're saying I'm you're a coward you're a coward because you can't run away from the truth from the truth you, yes. you, well, I, I, I like to be more positive and say you're a hero, yeah, okay, that you're standing okay, up okay. against powerful people at the threat yes. of your own life and livelihood. Um, because we need education. We Human beings yes. need to stand up against autocrats and dictators and cult leaders Yes. Uh, who are yes. narcissists who only yes. care about power and money and sex and don't care and if they destroy the resources of the planet. The sort of things that are going on in this country. Now, let me give you an example. Please. Today, the chief minister of Karnataka is a person called as Basavaraj Boma. You don't bother about the names. But his father was one of the earliest people who was in the movement called as a radical humanist movement, which took inspiration from the, the humanist movement, uh-huh. took inspiration uh-huh. from the radical humanist movement, founded by M. N. Roy, who was a secretary to the World Communist Party, and he was an Indian, M. N. Roy. You say communist? Today, Did I just hear you say the word communist? World Communist Party, okay. M. N. Roy. Uh-huh. In the early days, okay, 
he was a contemporary of lenin and stalin and then he went with the trotsky group so mm-hmm. he was in mexico mm-hmm. and then he came back to india and he put this his thesis Reading point thesis, and he proposed this radical humanism. The humanist uh-huh. movement has taken a lot of inspiration from that. Uh-huh. And the father of the present chief minister himself was the chief minister of Karnataka, and he was saying that he was inspired by the radical humanist movement. So you can think of a place like this, where a Hindu Twa party is ruling a state. and this father of the chief minister was a man with humanist values mm-hmm. so this is a sort of contradictory things that you see in this country hmm. people talking about secularism people talking about a common civil code mm-hmm. the present ruling party is saying we'll have a common civil code just imagine this they say we do not want the muslim women to where that what they call as the hijab Burk, yeah the hijab but a big commotion was going on in our state because they banned it banned people from wearing it to schools mm-hmm. and uh, then looking for temples under every mosque finding every place of worship that was there had a temple underneath or a statue underneath or mm-hmm. had a some object called a shivling Hmm. so these are the sort of things that are going on confusing mythology with history confusion is confusing a technique people with things like ayurveda homeopathy yeah and then they will confuse people with that but they themselves would never follow that mm-hmm. the ruling combination would say that aeroplanes existed in the time of rama thousands of years ago but they would go to france to buy a plane for themselves the prime minister has bought a huge uh, boeing specially equipped boeing uh-huh and it was not from the ramayana it was from us i think it's <laughs> right but they're claiming that it w- w- existed it, it all- existed thousands of years thousands of years ago wow and that's magical thinking yes and they say we had head transplant we had ivf there is this uh, one of the biggest epics in the world mahabharata in which the pandavas and kauravas fight each other there are 100 kauravas 100 mhm and they say they were born by ivf in vitro fertilization techniques which existed in india thousands of years mhm thereby confusing the people Mm-hmm. taking them for a ride in the name of things like ayurveda mm-hmm. who's where the claim is that the body is made from five elements and you know about homeopathy sugar pills right honey man and his sugar pills yeah and then talking about yoga how people can levitate doing <laughs> yoga you know about that how an australian got a wonderful settlement I met him in, uh, I think, in Melbourne. He yes. told me, Narendra, I got a very good settlement from there because he had joined for some course where they said that some advanced course in yoga, where they said at the end of those two months or three months, he would levitate. They made him sit on a rubber mattress and bounce. Bounce. That and sounds was, like that TM, transcendental yeah. meditation. Yeah, 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 correct. It is TM. Yeah. My my studies. Got it. And then he took them to court, mm-hmm. and he uh, told me that he got a. Very nice settlement, handsome settlement. I said, "How much did you get?" He said, "I'm not at liberty to live because I've signed a non-disclosure clause." Right. But he told me something. Narendra, if you need any money, you just let me know. I can give you a bit. Well, I'm sure you could use some extra help for no, your you good can't. work. You can't. No. You can't. Nice. Uh, let me tell you frankly that none of our work has stopped because of lack of money. Mm-hmm. our work has stopped because of opposition from these people and the silent majority keeping silence yeah it's not that every indian is a fanatic hindutva guy it's not so 
Right. The common man wants to live in peace with his neighbor. Right. He doesn't mind if his neighbor's daughter wears a scarf around her head when she goes to school with his daughter. Right. And in the area where I stay, the western coast of the Karnataka of our state has got a very syncretic culture. And uh, in some states, say like a state like Kerala, how you distinguish between a Hindu and a Muslim and a Christian is not even by their names. It's by them telling I'm a Christian or I'm a Muslim. Verbally. Uh -huh. Because their names are the same, their language is the same, their dress is the same, their food is the same. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. These are the people who are trying to sow these seeds of discord and try to cash in and cash on that, saying that Hinduism is in danger. 80% of the population of this country are Hindus, yet Hinduism is in danger. The Hindutva party is in power right from the local city, municipal corporation to the parliament, yet Hindus are in danger. It's so parallel to here. There are Christians who feel like, like the cult of Trump have taken over the Christianity with yes. their, their, their casting out demons and speaking in tongues and normal Christians in America are like, this is not what Jesus taught. Like yeah. this has nothing to do with giving money to, to get to heaven is the opposite of what Jesus taught. Yeah. But so there's very, a very similar parallel happening here with this. Yeah. And again, you have a 27% atheists. We don't have that advantage. Yeah, well, yeah, we're not no we're not organized and strategic in understanding what the problems are and how to how to sol solve them. People, a lot of people are overloaded. They're worried. They're anxious, and they are distracted from what is survival based. It's horrible. Yes. Yeah, the same thing is happening in this country today. We are running at a huge deficit, deficit mm -hmm. budget. Inflation is hitting us very hard. Yeah. Now the Ukraine war has hit us harder. Yes. The COVID mm -hmm. pandemic has really finished us off quite a bit of our uh, people. And uh, the, our response to COVID was, uh, I should say, one of the worst, highest death toll in the world is in India. Really? Of course, we have got a huge population too. It yeah. cannot be held. Right. But the reaction to it was so much from the seat of pants of the man sitting at the top. He declares a lockdown in a country like India in four hours. Imagine a country of 1.3 billion people put into a lockdown in four hours notice. Yeah. And a country like Singapore from one end to the other end, you can drive, drive across in two hours. Use four days notice for a lockdown. Right. China, of course, is a dictatorship. You just don't know what's happening here. Right. And ours is an alleged democracy. And the prime minister of the country tells people to bang plates, ring bells, to drive away the COVID virus. Wow. No. They Terrible. told the people, observe darkness, and after, say, one hour of darkness, light alarm. And his followers applauded that. They said, what a genius move. The virus will go and sit inside your body. It will be sitting there in the dark. And when you light the lab, it will come out and jump on the lab and commit suicide. Wow, magical These thinking. Sort of, no, this is the sort of magical thinking. So what about and, the young people there? And, and then we're going to wrap up, Narendra. The young people who are on the internet, do they have hope of, of becoming more scientifically educated? <laughs> That's a joke, Steve. India, is my quote, is a country in which a 21st century technology is superimposed on a 16th century mindset. Uh -huh. You use the technology to further the magical thinking of your own mindset. I see. That's distressing. 
Yes. In, say, 16th century, it would take a few months for some rumor about some supernatural power to reach from the northernmost part of the country to the southernmost part. Mm-hmm. Now it does in 10 minutes. Yeah, That's the only thing that has changed. The yeah. mindsets have not changed. The WhatsApp University, the Facebook College, they all have their graduates. They have their postgraduates. They have their doctorates. Mm-hmm. They have their universities. Everything goes by that. Mm-hmm. They use technology to debunk science. That's they terrible. use the tools of science, the products of science to debunk science itself. So this is a sad state of it. It's very sad. It's very upsetting to hear that. I was hoping you would say that there's a growing movement of skeptics in India, but what I'm hearing you say is that's not the case. Yeah, there is a movement, right, but a much stronger, much bigger, much more widespread movement is necessary so that this country doesn't go to dogs. Right. That's all. You see what's happening in Sri Lanka today? Yeah, it's terrible. It will happen in a much larger scale in this country. Mm. And when it hits, it will be hitting the world, not just one country. Yeah, it's terrible. Well, thank you for your good work, Narendra. Stay safe. Uh, We need to come up with some scaled interventions to change minds worldwide. Yes. And my hope was with the doctoral work that I did to create a framework for the legal system to evaluate undue influence or brainwashing or mind control uh, in the hope that that policies can be changed. But as we see in the United States, the infiltration into the legal system, I think, has corrupted our Same is happening in this country. Same thing is happening here, too. You know, the courts have been taken over by, by, for political gain and not justice. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, it's very sad. Anyway, I'd like to end on a positive note. So yeah, sure. I'll try. <laughs> I'm, I'm not giving up, and I don't think you're giving up. No, no, I, I never give up, as long okay. as I'm alive. Good. I'm not give up. And even when I'm dead, I'm not giving up. My <laughs> body is going to the medical college ah. so that the students can learn anatomy. I learned anatomy on somebody's body. Let yes. somebody learn anatomy on my body. Yeah. Take for that. Yeah, it's great. Well, Why thank you so much for everything. Time. We'll stay in touch. Yeah.